Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to Heroes Untapped, episode 15. God, I can't believe we've uh, got every, every episode we do every week is amazing, and I can't believe we've already gone to episode 15. It is the 4th of November, 2015, and I am your host, Discon Kerr, and thank you very much for watch, for coming to watch Heroes Untapped, the ANZ Heroes of the Storm show, uh, talking about ANZ stuff, events, news, information, Anything going on, whatever goes. I don't do this show alone. Joining me tonight are two amazing hosts, or my co-hosts. We have Finach from New Zealand. Finach, what's going on, good sir? How's Next been treating you this week? Ooh, it's been good. I watched all those um, BlizzCon games. Man, so good. Yep. So good. They, they, they are, the brackets, like, we'll talk about them a little bit later, but you look at the brackets just from the scores, and you think, man, that tournament looks pretty one-sided. But, I mean, all the games were amazingly close. It was really good to watch. And also, my other co-host tonight is also Blue Aura from XL5. Blue Aura, good sir. Uh, how about yourself? Did you manage to catch those games on the weekend? Uh, I watched some of the games. I've been mm. pretty sick last week, so just been kind of resting up, not doing much at all. Yeah. Oh, that's not good to hear. Well, uh, hopefully you're getting better, and hopefully you're not wrecked for BlizzCon, because that's obviously BlizzCon this weekend, and that would be devastating to have to be uh, curled up in bed. Having said that, that may make the uh, BlizzCon experience maybe a bit neater because you just don't don't have to go anywhere. You just stay in bed <laughs> That's all day. That's it. That's <laughs> it. And also, as a very special guest on the show tonight, we have Clapton, member of Ascended Gaming, probably one of the uh, one of the newest teams on the scene, but also one of the uh, teams making a uh, a big statement. They're just amazing to uh, amazing to watch. Coming together really well. And you're just a group of really good, uh, really good guys as well, Clapton. So thanks very much for coming on the show. Uh, let us know how's your week been. Oh, fucking busy as hell. <laughs> I haven't had a busy week in a long time. I mean, the final year of my university thing, and there's just assignments everywhere. Yep. Oh, that feels. I get that. Oh <laughs> uh, well, that's um. Hopefully, they're going well for you. It's um. So you're doing your assignments. Are you, you, and you've got exams coming up as well? Or no, you've already... I'm actually really, really lucky. I don't take exams. I'm, I, yep. I'm, a, I'm an art student. I'm, I'm an, an English major. Ah, really yep. Education, so I don't have any exams. It's just all assessments, all essays. Yep. All oh, right. Oh, very well. I'm, go I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I don't know. It's um, uh, good that you have an e slightly easier run, but obviously I can imagine your assessments would be inc amazing. But um, anyway, so we've got... Well, let's just get straight into the show because the show's tonight, while a little bit uh, small in content, because obviously it's um it's pretty quiet in the NZ scene at the moment. There's just um, a lot of really cool things to talk about. So I think we already mentioned it. So first up, let's get into the WCS or the World Championship Series, uh, or a little bit more commonly known as uh, the Road to BlizzCon or the BlizzCon World Stage. Uh, obviously, we're talking about the Heroes of the Storm games leading up to this weekend's finals to see who will be uh, crowned the world champion for Hero of the Storm. And it's pretty, it's a bit of a special world championship because it's technically the first world championship since Heroes of the Storm release. So it's a, it's a big tournament. It's a big event. All the teams are amazing to watch. And it's just, it's just been really good so far. Um, for those that aren't aware, hopefully everyone has been watching them, but for those that aren't aware... Uh, BlizzCon this year is so huge in the esports scene, it had to actually start a week early for esports. And all the initial games have already been played for the uh, Heroes of the Storm uh, uh, top eight. have already been played. No one's been knocked down. They played all the games up until that point, which I thought was um, a pretty you know cool way. No, no, everyone, all the teams get to have a get to have their um, light at BlizzCon. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so. Let's start off with uh, Blue. I've only managed to watch a couple of games. What games have you managed to uh, catch of the uh, WCS for Heroes? I was just about to bring up the bracket and flick through, so come back to me. <laughs> no worries. I've just um, Everyone who's in chat, and of course it'll be on the podcast, it'll be on the links and all that stuff as well uh, in the description on, the, uh, on my blog. Just posted the brackets for you guys to go and check out yourself as well. Um, so, uh, Finach, you've seen a couple of games. Did you manage to uh, watch them all? Or... Oh yeah, I managed to watch every single one. How, how good was that Navi versus DK game? All of them, all oh, three. Wow. You know, Navi is always even in the mm. European leagues. They've been known to like run 
a bunch of uh, comps that don't involve any warriors. Yeah, and it's always nice to see them pick that bright wing again. Mm. It's always nice to see that bright wing pick. Well, that's it. That's it. They um. So, uh, so I was about to say just from Clapton. Did you see that game, Clapton? Oh, it was brilliant. I, I, I'm, I'm an army supporter. I love every single yeah. army game. Play, you know? I want them to win it. I want them to go all the way and take this. Well, that's it. I mean, they potentially could go all the way. I mean, after... Well, see, it's a weird one, actually. It's a weird one. So, for those of you that aren't aware, um, a Navi European team came up against uh, Team DK. That Now, they're the Singaporean team, aren't they, Team DK? Uh, Korean. Korean, sorry. Korean team. Oh, God, I always get my things mixed up. Singapore, that's what was um, WCS I'm thinking about. Sorry, uh, North American. Sorry, yeah, the... Um, Korean team, DK, now they were actually the favourites. They, they were pitted as the favourites in this tournament to go all the way to the end, to the grand final. And not that they wouldn't lose any games, but they weren't expected to drop into the lower, lower bracket at all. Uh, Navi, or Nats, uh, uh, what's it, Natsas Vincia, I think that's the full team name, the European team, came up against them in the, um, in the second round. In the uh, winners' playoffs, they uh, beat Braveheart and Team DK beat Tempo Storm. That, that's how good Team DK are. They thrashed Tempo Storm um, and advanced on. They came up against each other and they decided around. They both won a game each. The deciding game, Nat's, um, sorry, Nat, uh, Navi took four melee and one Brightwing. That was two assassins, two warriors. And Brightwing on on Haunted Mines of all maps. And they won. They they took that game. It was incredible to watch. They had uh Tyrael, was it that Tyrael, Kerrigan? Um, I mean they they were the two key points. Tyrael, Kerrigan, Brightwing, Arthas, and I can't remember who the other assassin was. Was it was it Illidan? No, it wasn't Illidan, was it? Uh, oh, I, I think it was but- wasn't it Butcher? Which I cannot remember who the other... In fact, yeah. they had four melee, so instantly you think, God, what are these guys doing? I mean, that's a cluster... It's a clusterfuck of uh, people getting in each other's way and stuff. No one has a really good way to jump over the top of each other. Um, but, yeah, the, the first 10 minutes of the game, it looked like Navi had made a bad... Like, a huge mistake. And then all of a sudden, at the 10-minute mark, I, when the heroics come out, they just... They turned every single fight. Every time DK went in for a team fight, um, they were essentially wiped or killed two to three heroes for no for no exchange. Um, it was an amazing, I mean, an incredible game to watch. I mean, the, if you guys haven't seen it, you got to go check it out. Just Haunted Minds, 4 Malay, Brightwing versus a pretty traditional comp. And the 10-minute mark, once those heroics came out, it was a slaughter fest. Um, I, I, I don't know more, what more to say. I mean, that was the game highlight. That's the game the internet is talking about. Go check it out. Um, I noticed um, after that game, Brightwing's been picked up a lot more yeah. recently as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, she's not a she's not a bad hero. I mean, she's not bad, but traditionally, there's just been other healers that do more than like just or, uh, do more than her or do more than her earlier on in the game. People complain about how much she heals initially. When she's at level twenty, she's kind of like the same as every other support essentially. But um, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that more people are playing her. I mean, I wouldn't surprise more people playing Tyria with Sanctification. So it's um. So, so Clapton, did you um, did you ever watch it? Look at any of the analysis after the game? Um, so, I'm sorry, say that again. Um, did you did you see any like the um the analysis after the game about it? like what really started winning their like winning the fights? Like what was the did, like what was the key to um and uh, Nat's uh, sorry Navi doing that to taking out those fights? Um, honestly, I didn't get to watch any of the after games. I, oh, I was, yep. Yeah, because I was busy. Um, mm. Only thing I can really say is that Navi had some serious balls pulling out a comp like that against DK, which, you know, before that mm. point, they were considered possibly the best team in the world at the moment. Yep. Well, yeah, they definitely... It's just it's just thrown. Um, it's just really surprising. I mean, mm. now, having said... to. So obviously uh, Navi advances, so they, they've 100% got a place in the sort of finals playoff. Uh, Team DK goes down. They haven't had their deci- who they're playing against decide yet because the elimination round prior to that, so obviously they beat Tempo Storm, uh, Navi beat Braveheart, the uh, Chinese team, and now Braveheart has to face off against Tempo Storm. So... 
that's um we I think I think in that in that regard I think Tempo might win because yeah. Braveheart just doesn't have that much practice. Mm. Oh that's uh, it like yeah. Sorry guys I was oh, sorry I was just saying yeah, cuz Tempo's uh, gone uh, like all the problems they're having cuz they've had a bit of a uh, uh, argument, disagreement. I think after this year, after these games, we're not going to see Tempo Storm with this configuration of players again for of, of these configuration of players. But um, yeah, sorry, continuing about Braveheart. Oh, um, okay. So for those of you guys who don't know, the number one seed for mm. the Chinese um, road to BlizzCon was actually Eastar, but they didn't mm. get their visas, unfortunately. So they disbanded and formed Braveheart. So I think. It was three, um, uh, and don't quote me on this. I think they had three players from Eastar come into Braveheart, and then mm. they got two replacements. Yeah. So they haven't had a lot of like team practice. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Tempo Storm will take that from Braveheart, or maybe Braveheart will bounce back a little mm. bit of practice before BlizzCon. Mm. Well, I mean, and, and that's the thing. Yeah, you're 100 right. So not only yeah, um, Eastar visas denied. But even yeah, even Braveheart, some of their original players also had visas denied. So it's kind of like a um, a mix a mix of both teams that still had good visas or for wh- whatever reason. Um, and just their performance, you know, against Navi, they got two zeroed by um Navi. So it's not looking very good for them in that thing. It looks like Braveheart. I, I'd probably say Temple Storm will take out Braveheart, and then DK obviously will um come up against Temple Storm again. And I think I think we're pretty oh, disco predictions here. I think we're pretty safe to say that uh, DK will beat Tempo again. But every time I say something, it's hideously wrong, hideously wrong. So uh, take disco predictions as what you will. But um, so that's it there. So there, I think I think DK is definitely will advance. Navi obviously have already advanced into the finals. And then we just look at the group A. So they did divide the top eight into group A, group B. And so over in the Group A scene, we had Cloud9 uh, having a pretty crystal, a crystal clear run over to their thing. Like, all good games, but Cloud9, they're just, um, they're just so polished at the moment. They're just an amazing team to watch. Um, I don't know, what are your thoughts on the, um, the Cloud9's run? So they came up against GIA and Team Diginauts. Has anyone got the well, the hero picks for the games? Because I'm sure I watched that one, but I can't remember what was picked. Uh, I don't have the picks, unfortunately. I've only only got the brackets. I can I've got the vods, <laughs> so you can quickly watch through them. But um, I don't have the picks themselves. I keep going, going hunting. I think I watched that game, but um, from what I saw from Cloud Nine, Cloud Nine was still playing really strong. Mm. Um, obviously not at their peak, but yeah, yeah, they, they still looked pretty good. And I was a bit curious mm. as to whether or not it was just a little bit of overhype about how they were having issues or yeah, um, yeah, if, mm. if they were actually going to be off their game. And yeah, so at first mm. I thought they were just doing incredibly well and had a shot and then, yeah, we saw them start to get a little bit shaky. Yeah, that's it. They, they still advanced. Well, that's uh, it for From me. Group A. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, that's Cloud9. I mean, I think the biggest problems, Tempo were the ones having... Oh, sorry. The... Yeah, Tempo. Yeah. Um, I mean, getting, it, it... getting my eggs in the wrong basket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all right. We will forgive you. You are sick. You've got a pretty good excuse. It's like, mine's all over the place. <laughs> but it's... Um, I mean, so Cloud9 obviously advanced. And in the finals, right, we can see that Cloud9 and, um, and um, Navi aren't going to be up against each other effectively to the grand final. So those two teams won't see each other. So we'll assume that the decider that team that let's say Team DK wins, right? Team Team DK comes out of Group B, so they'll actually probably go across to play Cloud Nine, is um my prediction. And then over here in Group A, I mean, I, actually I don't know who's going to win out of Group A to be honest. I mean, Group A is just a really strong tier. I mean, uh, GIA Cloud Nine, uh, Team Diginaut, uh, uh, Digin, Digi, uh, I can't say the name. I'm terrible with it. Yeah, uh, Diginaut's. Uh- Dignitas. Dignitas is I can't say it. I heard it. I heard it all weekend, and I can't say it to save my life. <laughs> I, I said, yeah. It's, see, it's the N. It's the N, Finach. That's like your yeah. name. It's the N that throws me off. Uh, we've got Team YU. Sorry, YL. Um, I, just, I don't know who's going to come out of that bottom one. Who do you, who do you uh, reckon? Anyone. Anyone. Throw it out. Uh, team YL, GIA, uh, Team... I, I, I'd put my money on Dignitas, honestly. Dignitas? Um, and- yeah, they've looked fairly strong, um, and they were able to provide Cloud9 with a fair amount of competition. You know, they yeah. 
definitely took Cloud9 to the limit. Cloud9 did not have an easy win against Dignitas. So I think they'll be the ones to come out and reverse an army if that's yep. the way the draft will go. Yeah, and you know, looking at they are they did they did win their opening match against Team YL, advanced up against Cloud Nine, and they did take one game away from Cloud Nine as well. So just from a match history standpoint, they're doing much better than GIA and Team YL in that sense. And they obviously have, they don't have to play that extra game that YL and GA have to play either. So technically, you could say they'd be a bit more fresher on the day. So it's um very interesting. But so we'll see Dignitas come up against. We'll come up against um with the final break. We'll come up against uh Nats uh come up against Navi. So that's um. Yeah. I apologise, any Dignitas fans, but Navi's going to take that. You're talking Navi, so do you, who who do you so we'll do we did predictions last week, and I know my prediction was potentially wrong. Like anything could change. Right? These these are all great teams here and these are what I'm what we what I think will happen but these are all stellar teams no one's knocked out these are the best of their regions or as close as they can get to it because of visa issues um, it's still anyone's game but I think I've got a feeling that uh DK and uh Nats and Navi will f- face each other in the finals again I'd like, I'd like to see that mm. And I think DK will. T- and I think DK will still win. I think they've they've seen uh, Navi's comp. They know what they're up against. They're not going to fall for it a second time. And I reckon they'll take it out. My, that's my predictions. What about you guys? I agree with you. I think DK mm. will win because I think they're the stronger team overall. I think that, like you said, they've had a chance to feel out Navi. They've had a chance to see what yep. they're about, learn their style a bit more. And I think DK is going to come into their next match with them if there is one, obviously. Yep. Um, but they're going to come into the next match with him a lot stronger. So a lot of people shooting him. But I want Na'Vi to win. I actually want Na'Vi to win. I really, really would oh, okay. prefer to see Na'Vi win over DK. Yep. All right. And, and you know, they're only a couple of games away from that possibly being the, um, being the thing. Was that someone in chat? GIA versus Team IL. It's like pseudo-political... Um, Strife, Taiwan versus mainland China. <laughs> well, we're, get, we're getting deep now, aren't we, boys? <laughs> that's it. That's a cool comment from chat. Love it. Uh, you know that. You know the hot scene is going to be a big global thing when we're talking about politics now, right? Yeah, that's it. It's it's not just for it's not just for glory and honor, but it's also for the motherland now. <laughs> uh-huh. All right, presents my prediction. We've got Clapton's blue. What's yours? What's your uh, speculation? How these brackets are going to turn out? Uh, I haven't seen enough of the games, so I'm yep. not sure who's um, th- at the top of their form. But I- I've been a fan of Navi, Navi yeah. for a while, so yeah, my, I-, I hope they win it. You hope you're and, hoping for yeah, the I- I just European enjoy their team. Play style, so. All right, that's it, and they're pretty good. And uh, Finach, um, I actually, I think I don't think DK is going to advance uh, for the <gasps> final. I-, I really want yep. Dignitas to to go up against Navi. Yep, because. Uh, they they have the underdog story, you yeah. know. They came from Bob, and then they just got their sponsorship just before BlizzCon. Yeah. Um, uh, but definitely, I think Cloud Nine is gonna really suffer through the mm. ranks if they get, uh, go up against DK. Yeah. Because from like their picks and their comps during mm. the uh, bracket stages, they picked really safe mm. uh uh drafts, unlike Navi and and Dignitas and DK. They really mix up. The way they draft their um their team compositions, whereas Cloud9 just tries to play meta safe. So yeah, yeah. really want to see Navi maybe Dignitas go up mm. against each other. Well, I mean, in theory, in theory, as long as um, Dignitas wins their lo- their uh, lower bracket games, um, I'm pretty sure that's who they will actually come up against. It will be um, Navi and Dignitas fighting each other for a finals placement for a grand finals placement. So that's uh, that's my turn out. All right, well that's cool. Well that's the WCS. So it's on this weekend, guys. It's obviously it's attached to BlizzCon, uh, but don't stress. Don't stress. You don't need a BlizzCon ticket. All the esports stuff is free. You can watch that. There's no problems, no issues with that. You don't need a BlizzCon ticket. Though you do need about a 2 a.m. wake up call. That's for me. I think for the for uh, most Eastern staters, it's like a 5 a.m. And, and that's, yeah, 5 a.m. for anyone in yeah. New South Wales because we're like three hours apart. Yes. Yeah. And in New Zealand, I think it's actually, uh, it's not too 6 bad. 6 a.m. here in New Zealand, yeah, not too bad. Yeah, that's, that's actually, actually... That's actually reasonable. I, I could do mm. that. 
Yeah, that's doable. That's so much better than poor WA and freaking disco. I've got to get it. I've got either. I've got that. I've got that choice, right? Do I stay up to two, or do I try and wake up at two? <laughs> if, I, if I were you, I'd start pounding the red balls the day, the night before. Oh, that's it. That's, you know, just do a 12 hour stream. I stream till BlizzCon starts. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and then All stream right. your reaction to BlizzCon. I've thought, actually, I, I thought about doing that for the, some of the um, esports stuff when I was trying to get into shoutcasting, but I couldn't actually get into it because no one loved me. Um, was just shoutcasting over the top, not shoutcasting, but casting the drafting stage. Like watching me and someone else watch a video and go, "Oh, this is what I think they're doing," uh, as a introductory thing. But that's a different stage. That was that was a long we time ago. If, um, we know if the new hero Artan is, is he going to be allowed in BlizzCon for the next set of nah. matches? He is. I want to see Artan. I I I would have liked to have seen him in the thing, but I he is not an option. He cannot be played. Medic can be played, but no one else. Oh God. I just opened yeah, up. Yeah, I, I understand. It makes sense. I'm telling you, I know enough chance to crash in. You know, I can dream. I can hope. Yeah. It would have been cool, but... Does that oh, mean uh, you reckon he's strong enough a pick to be picked up? If they could? Um, hard to say. I've played a few games with him, mm. and I'm definitely not the level of fucking Narvi he's at, so I can't really judge that one. But <laughs> based on what I've seen, he definitely is good. He just kind of sucks in the early game. He's a bit more of a late-game-oriented hero. He's um, he's like he's once you gotta get to him is heroic. He's heroic. It's not that it makes him overly stronger. It's just the presence his heroic puts on the field. The lightning beam, the laser sight beam, whatever it is, the the iron cannon that follows you. Uh, purify beam. Yeah, the purify beam. I mean that just um, it it disrupts people in team fights because they have to run away from it. You can't soak it. It's it's not a thing you can soak. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> more. Sorry, more in the chat's gone. Have we spoken about the A and Z yet? <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting there. Patience, child. <laughs> there it is coming. Or is it? What was the next thing to talk about? It is. Sorry. So moving on. So WCS. So moving on. Uh, next up is the A and Z team scene. We just uh, thought it'd be a good thing just to uh, highlight what's going on in that in the sense look at uh, all the inactive teams disbanded team what teams are still around and kicking and just a little bit of a chat like is this is this a concern is this something we should be concerned about or is this just the you know the end of year wind down and come next year everything should fire up again so just looking at that so currently in the ANZ scene we've had XL5 Apex Phonetic Array and Silicon Sports um, officially and unofficially, um, just become inactive. They're just not doing anything. XL5 officially came out and said that they're not competing at the moment or until further notice. Um, Apex have said they might be coming back, they might not be. And Phonetic Ray and Silicon Sports, I just... Hello? Bontons? <laughs> they're just, uh, yeah, they're just missing. It's... um. And then disbanded teams. So obviously we had Immunity disband earlier in the uh, earlier in the year or a couple of months ago. Uh, Hello Team was re- originally doing the weekings weeklies. They're gone. Newcomer Team Revolution has uh, officially has disbanded as well. Um, I know Space Sharks is going through a change up at the moment. It's um, I've left Space Sharks. So it's um, and one of the other players is also in the process of going as well. Uh, but they're still kicking. They're still surviving. They're just trying to bring up new players. I mean, is it, I, th- I think we've brought this up before on the show, but let's bring it up again. Is this bad? Is this, is, is this, is, is the ANZ scene dying from this? Sadly, I, it is, unfortunately. Mm. It really is starting to die. Um, I don't think it'll ever completely die, because there'll always be, always be me, always be me in Ascended Gaming, I'm going to be honest. We're never yeah. Done. Yeah, so Ascended Gaming is actually doing really strong right now. Like, I think you guys are um, really dedicated. Try and get your games on. Try and scream as much as you guys can. What What are your guys' thoughts? Um, maybe, maybe just your thoughts as well. I don't know if you can speak on Ascended Gaming's behalf. But what are your thoughts on this? You're trying to build a strong competitive team in a situation where there's no teams to scrim against. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Um... And it's not an easy solution to the problem. There's so many different factors to take into consideration. And the main one being is that there's not really any incentive for teams. Um, I'm of the opinion it doesn't need to be incentive beyond enjoying the game. That's mm. my personal opinion. 
I honestly don't think that money yeah. or fame or prestige will come into it. I personally believe that if you want to be a competitive team, you need to enjoy the game. And yeah. And I know for a fact that all the boys on Ascended, mm. myself, we all enjoy and love the game a lot. We have fun every time we play. Mm. We're not lost. It's always a fun game for us. Yeah. But what what does it? So it's it's having this fun and it's really enjoyable and stuff. But I mean, is it is it the competitive? Like it, so we're talking about competitive nature of the game. Is it the competitiveness, competitiveness, which is what's making it fun for you guys, or is it the like you could you could go into quick match as five guys and win or lose. You can go into the twenty minute wait queues in team league, win or lose. But you guys are still out there trying to scrim and stuff. Like what what's the difference between me and my four mates and you guys wanting to go that try and go that next step? Well, aside from the obvious things that it's... Um, you guys are better than me and my five mates, four mates? Oh, no, <laughs> come now, don't say that. The only re- okay, I'll give you this much. The only reason we may have been better is we've been around for a bit longer. We've played together mm. for a bit longer. Um, but we enjoy doing the scrims because we, we recognise that it's a high level of gameplay. This, the fact that it's a scrim itself is a... It's a high level form of gameplay. You can go into QM any time you want at five stats, sure. Yeah. And that's fun in its own way, but... Yeah, it gets boring when you realize, oh crap, we're up against this, we're up against a bunch of randoms, we don't have a team call, you know, this and that and the third. Yeah. Um, for, for us, being able to scrim is taking our gameplay to the next level. Um, mm. Yeah, honestly, we just enjoy scrimming because we are, we recognize that as the next level. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I apparently don't have to speak today. Um, <laughs> no, that's all right. So, so... Tell me about like so you, you agree that the scene's in a little bit of a bad state at the moment. You don't think it's going to die, but you definitely you, you, you can see the teams are spanning coming inactive. Um, you don't you don't look at that and you think, gee, that's just time of year. Like we are talking like we, we're talking about November. I mean, we, we're coming up to you know, we're coming up to Christmas. Um, you can't. I, I'm a believer if you can't compete for 12 months of a year, you've got to have a break. Um, it's not just just a reflection that every every sport, every esports. You gotta have. You gotta. You just gotta wind down for the year. Um, unfortunately, the timing of this as well is a bit yep. problematic because look at all the other big games that are coming out. Not, yep. not only multiplayer games. Like, aside from the obvious Overwatch, uh, we got big games like Fallout 4 coming out. You know, Bastard's mm. gonna jump off and play that for hours and just say, "Oh wait, I used to play Hots." Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, we're just in the middle of that era where all the cool new games are coming out. So. Hots isn't going to get as much attention as it probably should be as a result. Mm. But you are right, the time of year does have an impact. And we're not really going to see a, a bigger influx of players until probably after the Christmas break. Yeah. So, and so, so you're, 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 um, you're optimistic and you believe that we are going to get players back? Absolutely. <laughs> um, I have the utmost host for this, um, for this place, for this oh, scene. Oh. Yeah. No, I want. Oh, I want as many competitive players as possible. I want as many competitive teams as possible. I want competition. I want to be able to play as many different people as I can. I want this thing to grow. But I want to be able to prove to the rest of the world that Australian hot teams are fucking up there. Yeah. Yeah. No, and definitely. I mean, it's, I, I definitely have the same. Like, let's say the same passion, wanting to get the scene up there. But what can we do? Like these these teams, this band, they're obviously there's nothing for them to hold on to, and what what's our way out of that? So I, I might actually I might give you a rest clap, and we'll talk to some of the other guys. So Blue, what what are you also on? You're also playing for a team at the moment. Um, how are you, how are the, how's the team? You guys like did it uh, did it survive and crawl out of the ashes, or did it did it go its own separate ways? What's exactly happening with um? I can't say your team name, so I just call them Kyanite Knight Esports. What what's yeah. happening with you guys? Did you guys stick it out? I haven't really been in touch with some of the, um hmm. some of the guys at the moment. For example, like. Um, I, I'm still in touch with PB. Just we chat and play a bit of Hearthstone together, but we don't play too much. And like I used to chat to AT every day, whether or not we're playing. But yep. I don't know. I haven't really spoke to him that much mm. recently. But in fairness, I haven't actually been playing the game. So, mm. but um, uh, I think with yep. the the scene in general, sometimes um, things need to kind of crumple down a little bit, and just just so they can grow back stronger. Um, mm. So we, we've seen a lot of teams taking a break at the moment. I don't think any of the players have just completely mm. dropped the game and decided to move on. So if they're still floating around and um, as we see new players join or other players leave or yeah. things like that, 
we're going to see them um, just pick up these players when they're enjoying mm. um, playing. Sorry, one second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, struggling. Um, yeah. That, so that don't, just new, don't die on the show. Can you say bring after players the show? in and the meta will change and develop, which will keep players interested and yep. keep things developing. And mm. um, yeah, as someone mentioned in the chat, if they fix matchmaking up, um, if they put kind of a leaderboard or a legend system in matchmaking, then we'll see players taken a lot more competitively and serious. Um, yeah, there's there's lots of little things that will come in the future that will just improve everything yeah. and, and and bring things back. But at the moment, I can kind of understand why things have happened the way they mm. have. But at the same mm. time, little little heart. Uh, it's a little bit difficult for me to grasp because. Yeah. I haven't spoken to a lot of the teams, but for example, with Kai Knight, things just kind of fell apart and we couldn't really stop it mm. and none of us know exactly how and I'm mm. not sure if that's with other teams, if other pe some people are taking it competitive, yep. if some people don't like their roles in the teams and they need to mix and match, mm. I don't know. But yeah, I, I, I'm with Clapton on this one. I still think we'll um, come back nice and strong after kind of mm. the hype of a few other games die mm. down. When BlizzCon this weekend as well is going to generate a lot of hype for Hero of the Storm too, um, you know, the, possibly talking about a new set of heroes coming out, new maps, new features in the pipeline, uh, possibly maybe even events for next year. I mean, there's so much that BlizzCon this year could do just to generate that build-up again for the following on year. That's um for Nat, just to, so talking on that, uh, talking about that hype, getting people excited for the game again. Um, what? What 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 do you think that um they really need to the ANZ scene sort of needs to do to um like revitalize this or revitalize hype itself back up? What, what I'm not quite sure on the words I'm trying to use. What is our next step? Are we just waiting for a lead from Blizzard in where we're going, or something else? Unfortunately, that would really. Sorry, oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, go ahead then. No, no, no. You go ahead. I've, I've talked enough. Okay, um, definitely having a little bit of help from Blizzard to revitalize the scene would, mm. you know, would do wonders for uh, the community. But I, I really don't know. Yeah, I think it's, it, I, I think it just falls on the community whether mm. or not we can keep everything, you know, keep everything alive. But yeah, yeah. I think it will help to get a little bit more hype after BlizzCon. Mm all the new features that yeah uh i read somewhere on chat that they do have to knock our socks off at this con yeah that is that is for sure mm. that's gonna help a lot other yeah. than that i guess we just wait for people to stop playing fallout 4 yeah we'll stop playing fallout 4 not get invited to overwatch beta i yes. mean um, so so many so many things i'm waiting for it's um so this is uh obviously there was a big aims there's this okay, let me get back on track here so on the ANZ forums today, that's on the battle.net, battle here's the Storm ANZ forums, guys. Go check it out. Starving, a, um, a very big caster in the ANZ Heroes scene at the moment, uh, put up a post about a little bit about the state of Heroes of the Storm and asked for ideas and suggestions on how we can advance onto it, advance onto it and to grow and develop the scene a little bit more. And it's, it's like a thread like that. You could imagine there's lots of good points, there's lots of bad points, and then there's just lots of crap in between. And but it is a really good, to be honest, it is a really good thing in its in its own right. And I put the suggestion, an interesting suggestion on on the thing, and I didn't get much feedback. And I put about that. I I, I personally feel that we need to look at running an amateur series, amateur league, amateur tournament, whatever you want to call it, and looking less towards the high-end players of Heroes of the Storm and looking more towards the lower-end players and trying to get people interested in the competition environment in a safe setting, in a setting where you're not going to come up against someone that, at the two-minute marks, knows the minions, the mercenaries spawn, grabs all the mercenaries on the map, and rotates down the bottom lane and murders two of your members down there. Just, um, just trying to build up the weekend warriors. Yeah, you know, we see it in we see it in all other sports. It's um if you're interested in playing football, you go down to your sports club and you play football on the reserve, the shit team, the reserves team for a local club and you're a weekend warrior. You're not you're not a superstar soccer player, but you you're good, you develop it 
and you might get really good at it and you might advance onto the next stage of the team like it's what what are your what are your thoughts on an idea like that or is this just loose, playing at loose strings here it's like okay amateur league cool who the fuck's gonna play in the amateur league because there's actually no one playing the fucking game <laughs> I think that, yeah, that, the, the second thing you said then is kind of a, a bit accurate. Mm. It, we, I don't know how many people in Australia actually play this game. Most yeah. of the people I speak to, if I'm like, hey, mm. came for a game of HOTS, they go, oh, nah, I'd play LOL or I'd play mm. something else. You want to play that instead? Yeah. So they don't, have the, they don't have the time investment for a game. That's it. Yeah, it just comes down to the fact that Blizzard entered this market late and people mm. don't want to get rid of their hundreds of dollars of worth of microtransactions to move across and yep. try out a new game. So if BlizzCon is amazing and brings a massive influx of players, mm. then you can't help but see the scene grow and then you'll get a ton of interest from lower level players. But the players that are currently in the game at the moment if they haven't been checking the forums or um, jumping in ANZ chat or anything like that, mm. I don't know if they will in future. It's I, I think it's about trying to tap into those players, and I, I don't I can't really think of a good way to do it unless you had mm. everyone just spamming, "Come join us!" in every single quick match game they played and yep. then you get a few people coming to have a look but mm. again some people get annoyed with that others yep. can't be bothered that kind of thing so mm. it's about finding the people I think alright so it's and I think it was a good point Robert Dobe actually sort of brought it up in um in that forum that Starving Post today as well he talked more about the um what, one of the biggest issues is the game itself and that it doesn't have a very good it, it, this all ties to matchmaking. This is an age-old problem. Here are the storm matchmaking is shit. Done and dust that conversation. But you've seen, but that's one of the biggest effects is that you can't, you know, normally in, in like League of Legends or two or something like that, you're ranking up. To, you're kind of ranking up to see if you want to be competitive. Where in this, getting to rank one or rank ones being matched up with rank 40s because of how the MMR works, that's... That's 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 the weakness of this game is that there's no way for someone to just in almost individually come better, become better, or have a measurement of where they are, or know how to. It's kind of you you play the game and you decide do I want to be on a team or not, and then that gap from having a team to actually being a real team and actually having a chance of winning and things is just so vast. There's no the 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 weak game mechanic or the weak quick matching or the weak matchmaking system is actually hurting the competitive nature because people don't know if they're competitive or not. I'm ranked one in here. I'm not ranked one in Heroes of the Storm. I'm actually fucking ranked 29. I'm shit. But if I was ranked one in Heroes of the Storm, that doesn't actually make me a good player. It doesn't actually mean anything. It's cool. It's cool to have ranked one, by the way. But <laughs> it doesn't It doesn't actually signify that I'm ready to be in a competitive, real competitive environment. Where at least in something like League of Legends, I think they got the challenger rank or the challenge, uh, the challenger uh, series. You're a challenger. Yeah, I, you're you you actually could be a competitive player. I hundred percent agree with that. Mm. The if we had a strong ranking system, such as mm. any other game, really, the moment you start <laughs> to get goes. the top of those levels, that's when you start like seriously looking for other people to form teams mm. and stuff like that. Whereas this, you hit rank one and you go cool. All right, my XP bar's full, and yeah, you just I don't know, keep playing mm. that. You you don't really go out looking for other things. So mm. yeah, if, if there was a oh, if there was a serious letter um, system implemented, I definitely think would see a change. But um, what's the other thing I was going to mention? I'll come back to me when I think. Let's think <laughs> of it. No worries. Um, well, I mean, it's I, I don't know if there's really much sort of much more in that state. I mean, it's um, there's no magic cure, magic one thing. Um, I saw a comment in chat, and you're 100% right, I think it came from Happy Rage. Um, amateur League, a lot of people are like, yeah, Amateur League sounds good. How do you tell who an amateur is? It's like, and and that, I think that's a hard tri trick. Like, KVA is not an amateur. He's he's won money. You would call him, for all intents and purposes, an outseen professional. But if he was on a team with four new players, that's an amateur team. It, it may have a star player, but he's on an amateur team for all intents and purposes. 
is that you know what's what's the definition? Can XL5 disband and all and then f- start a new team called XL6? <laughs> We're an amateur it's... team. It's a, we've never won. You know, just like things like that. Like there's so many other th- problems or issues to overcome that a format change isn't going to fix anything. A tournament change isn't going to fix anything. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's I guess the problem is is that there's too many problems, and it's hard to ban. You know, and and, and, you, and it, you can't band aid them. That you have to come up with strong solutions to the problem, which would all which would all initially be tied up with better matchmaking. It's like everything comes back to matchmaking. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. I think it needs to be said. No, I'm sorry. Sorry. no you go. While it's fresh in my mind, it needs to be said that I think a lot of people expect way too much from Heroes of the Storm mm. than what it can provide. Like, think about the other games that Australia's involved in on an esports level. Okay, so, if you limited the League of Legends to CSGO, probably. There might be Dota, who knows. Those games did not become as big as they are overnight. It took them years. It took Australia years to be involved at that level, you know. Um, Ots has been out say, for what, really a year? Maybe slightly longer? So, yeah. And it's honest, I think a lot of people, and I'm guilty of this a little bit myself, but I think most people in the anti community expect, expect uh, the scene to just magically appear and for us to be magically on the same level as Europe or America. Mm. But the key thing to remember is that our region is 10 times smaller than America. 15 times smaller than Europe, we are never going to have the same level uh, of scene that the Europe or America have, simply because we don't have as many people. We have to be a bit more realistic in our goals. Yeah, it, it, we we are. It, it's this is a we're still a super developing uh, scene. So and it's funny saying phrases like "pro." It's a very loose term. The conversation that's happening in chat right now is uh, they laugh at the phrase "professional," but I mean at the end of the day, there's teams that have won money from Heroes of the Storm. Like Team Immunity won what was it like ten thousand dollars or something like that. I mean the. They they won money. They went to America and got given money for playing. They're a sponsored team. Sure, the guys don't get paid week in week out. But if you've got if you've got a gaming group that has sponsorship that's taking money, and then you're winning money, I mean you're a pro. You know, yeah, you're. A, I'm going to fucking say it. You're a shit pro team, but you've taken money. You've gotten money from this game. Sure, you like I said, you're not a good pro team. I um, mean, and you're and you're probably got the worst sponsorship deal in the world. You're a, sponsored players that don't get paid for your time unless you win events um but the the sort of fact of the matter is is that these are professional teams sure not on the same world stage as good as any other country uh, other countries out there but that's that's the case is that we do have professional teams in australia that's yeah that's another point comparing it against oh. other countries as well so we are smaller we have got less of a player base i think our players are more interested than international esports anyway, but the yeah, you're right. The the teams that do come out are still the top teams in Australia. Or they could be like other teams that we don't know about but they don't compete so they don't count. Mm. So yeah, I think it's fair to be able to say that about the players. Mm. Um the other thing I was gonna mention is that yeah, but as Clapton kind of touched on uh, Australia being such a small server with um, so kind of few people interested at making the transition, the matchmaking yeah just makes us suffer even more um, because that that should be the easiest avenue to kind of yeah develop a competitive scene and it's non-existent. So mm. yeah, it's just completely fair that we're struggling at the moment. Mm. Yeah, it's I mean that's. I, I don't, I don't know what more we can say. It's, it's we're we're a struggling developing scene, um, and I I, I apologise, guys. It's um, don't don't take solely what I'm saying. Like I'm using all the terms loosely because we have a miniaturised professional scene. It's not for the truest extent of what it is, but it's just we we've got to have that differentiation. But um, I I, I don't know. So much. There's so much. I don't think we're getting other thoughts. I mean, we could spend all night going back and forth on this one. I just thought it would be interesting to come up with. Scenes dying. We just got to wait for BlizzCon, see what comes up, and hopefully people will uh, come uh, stick around or come back after the slump. 
Um, actually, another another thing is this is actually a really good time, a good thing to mention, guys. So on the forums today, Happy Rage, one of the big event organizers, did come out and say that he's effectively taking a break from Heroes of the Storm stuff at the moment, not organizing anything. Um, our other organizer, Morton, is in is very busy at the moment as well. That was something else came out of the forums. This is a really good time for anyone that's interested in running an event, gang event happening, or even working towards other people with other people to create events. Now it's a really good time. I mean, the the scene needs needs events, needs organization. So now's a really good time to get involved in it as well. I just sort of throw it out. They're not going anywhere. They're just both time strapped or taking a break from the scene as a whole. Hopefully they will come back and continue to do stuff. But um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where it goes on that front. All right, moving on. So I've um, angered the ANZ scene enough with that with that discussion. Um, moving on, let's talk about BlizzCon speculation. Uh, what do you guys think we're going to see out of BlizzCon this weekend? Uh, will Will Blizzard be announcing the retirement of Heroes of the Storm and canceling the project? Uh, Finette, what do you reckon? Uh, no, that would be <laughs> sad. We would just yeah. go up in arms for that, I think, if they cancelled the, uh, Heroes of the Storm. That's it. Heroes, Heroes Untapped Episode 16. Last episode yeah. ever made. Due to That's Heroes it. We're switching canceled. to LOL. I can't go back to League. I can't do it. I gave up on Game Box. I wasn't at it. I gave up on it. Oh, beautiful. All right, so they're not going to cancel the game, obviously, because they just they've thrown too much money at it, and I think they do love it. I think they do love Heroes of the Storm, and I think we all love it. So we obviously uh, that was just a joke. I don't think it's going to get cancelled. But what what are we going to get? I think we've already heard that they're planning to announce the four next heroes coming out and a new map as well, which is a bit of a trick because they say a new map. What they really mean is a new set of map tiles. So hopefully that's actually two maps coming out. Um, and we already started with you, Finash. Let's continue on. What uh, what do you reckon these four heroes are going to be? Uh, okay, so um, I so heard you've been doing. The, I think it was yeah. I have been doing research on this, and um, we actually got the news from uh, I think it was Ukraine. There was a Ukrainian hmm. uh, develop. Uh, I don't know. He was a member of Blizzard, I guess, and he sent out a tweet that there will be four heroes that will be announced on BlizzCon and two new maps and. Um, from just based loosely off of the stuff that we already know, and obviously I, I don't think a lot of people know this, um, we actually have a list of likely contenders for the new hero releases. Mm -hmm. Namely, that's going to be Cho'Gal, uh, Kel'Thuzad, Mechatork, Zul'jin, and Zamuro. And we know these guys might mm -hmm. be uh, the, the heroes that they're going to announce because we have a lot of content for them already uh, released. So Cho'Gal was shown off in BlizzCon 2013. All mm. of them are Warcraft heroes. Oh, fancy that. Uh, it's so if easy. You guys don't know, yeah. They can just import their models from Warcraft 3. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so um, so Cho'Gal is, uh, he's a o Ogre Magi, yeah. I guess. Uh, he was announced uh, BlizzCon mm. 2013. We got Kel'Thuzad, which was announced 2014, and we have uh, models of him. Unfortunately, they're like uncolored, so yeah. Hopefully, we'll see him. I think a lot of people are excited for the Kel'Thuzad. Uh, Mechatork, a little bit less likely because he was announced 2011, and we haven't seen much of him so far. Uh, mm -hmm. Zul'jin and Zamuro, uh, they were actually already in the game beforehand. Um, mm -hmm. They were in the game pre-alpha release, and if you guys don't know, Zul'jin is the troll guy with the two hand axes and he's been in i think three of the big class photos mm. or they just might come out with like left field like they did with the medic who knows well that's that's the weird thing like there yeah, they've got these heroes but they've kind of put them on the, the back man like they were there as fill-in or maybes or teasers and we just haven't seen any any reference to these guys since the 2013 2014 and they were never officially released as heroes, were they? They were just sort of like a background shots or concept art or concept models. So we just, it's all speculation. It's, um, what about, um, I think you think Blade Master, I think was being thrown around as well. Because again, there's some concept art and there's also a partial model for him. I think in the Heroes of the Storm or in Creation as well. I'm not sure I could just be making that up, but that's how rumors start, boys. That's, um, 
but yeah, so that's that's a list of possible heroes. Um, what about have you heard the rumor that are uh, in? Or oh, it's not rumor; it's true. It's in Overwatch. There's a map, and it's an arcade stage, and they have a arcade machine that has called Fighters of the Storm, which yeah, of cool. reference to Heroes of the Storm. Garrosh is fighting Kerrigan on it. So that obviously confirms Portal 3. I mean, confirms that Garrosh <laughs> could be the uh, next the next character in Heroes of the Storm. Um, it, did, any any merit? Or you just think that's just a cool cool little tidbit that obviously Blizzard are putting into Overwatch? I'd love for Garrosh to be in the game, but what would he be? Would he be a warrior or be an assassin? Hard to tell. 100% he's going to be in the game. Big corpse. 100%. He's a, he's a big name for Blizz. They mm. can't ignore Garrosh. Well, Even the fact that he had his own expansion, yeah, yeah. he's definitely going to come into the game. Well, they, um, had a, they had a talk about that. Like, people like... Cause Gromish, like everyone wants Gromish Hellscream. No one wants um, Garrosh Hellscream. But a good point was brought up that most people know who Garrosh Hellscream is because of World of Warcraft and the latest expansions uh, on him. So he's kind of, while maybe not as liked as Gromish Hellscream, it's just a bit more, let's say, public notice or popularity or just just know that people know who he is. I would, I would dare say a lot of people, if you said Gromish Hellscream, they might say, oh, that's that dude from uh, Hearthstone, isn't it? It's like, they're always from Warcraft 3. Like, Rrr. so it's um, what's that? Is is Finat? Sorry, chat. No, no, Finat is not my son. <laughs> Thank you for asking, chat. <laughs> cousins. They're not. They're not. They're not father and son. They're just cousins. It's okay. They're cousins. We come from the same planet, if you must know. But we so we reckon Garrosh. Uh, I, to be honest, I want Garrosh Hell Scream because I'm old. I'm I'm a neck beard. I'll face it, face the truth. So it's um I've been playing games forever. Um, but yeah, Gromish Hell, uh, Gromish, uh, sorry, Gorosh Hell Scream, possibility, or do you think that's just a cool Overwatch throw throw in? Possible. Possible. Unlikely. We'll, we'll just have to wait to see what they announce at BlizzCon. It could really hmm. be anything, but yeah, I, I think they need less warriors still. Yeah. Well, I mean, they've been churning them out. Like what we got, Rexar. Lyoric, Rexa, and uh, the latest guy, um, Artanis. So we've got three warriors. We've had two supports. I mean, we haven't had any assassins for a while. So, I mean, yeah, that that would hint to me that maybe we might get a Kel'Thuzad or something like that as an assassin. But what, when was our last specialist? Like, Savannah was the last specialist, wasn't she? Yeah, it was a while ago. Was it, or was it the Lost Vikings? I can't uh, remember. Lost Vikings, I think, yeah. yeah. Lost Vikings. Vikings. And like, but how many heroes ago was that? It's like about like, like six or seven by now. Yeah, so even a, like an specialist or assassins in the works would be more more a specialist than an assassin. I think even, the way to explain that is that the specialists that, are that probably the hardest hero to kind of create. You know, warriors are easy to make. They're fucking big meat shields. Give them a billion that big meat shields. Have. They're the hmm. easiest hero to make. Hence why Blizzard put out more of them than anything else. Really, that kind of explains it. Um, based on the list of heroes, though, most of those sound like they're assassins or specialists. Yep. Yeah, from the from the looks of it, they all seem to be ab about damage. I think we're gonna see like mages in Chogal and Kalthuzad, and just a bunch of melee assassins in the other ones. I think Chogal's gonna be a specialist. Specialist? Uh, yeah, hell yeah. I think just based on law, he's a bit of a summoner. He's like this evil yeah. warlocky ogre with you know, an extra head. He's like evil. He summons things. I think he's gonna be a specialist. Why? Actually, actually, I just I just thought about it. I thought about the next hero. So, Bliss BlizzCon, Legion, oh, Legion's going to be a big thing, right? Legion's pretty, pretty big. Illidan's already out of the picture, because he's in the game already. Do you think they might announce Gul'dan? Oh, please do. I want Gul'dan, and I want him to be an Affliction Warlock. I want a dot assassin in this game. How, how yeah. hype would that be? So, you want people to play Heroes of the Storm? How do you get all these crazy... <laughs> that's, that's beautiful. That's Lizard, beautiful. Lizard is very, very shifty with this sort of thing. Look at Legacy of the Void. Oh, we got Artanis. Legion coming out. Let's give us Gul'dan. Give us yeah. Tyrion. Give us Maiev. Someone. Someone yeah. who's got a big part in Legion. Maybe not Maiev. Or Tyrion. I, I, I've, 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 Gul'dan. I've just thought about it. Gul'dan will be announced. Hands down. He's just too much hype for Legion. Um, people will buy him in heartbeat. I was just thinking. Just, okay, so Heroes of the Storm is across all Blizzard titles. Not Blizzard Activision, we're not going down the Tony, Tony Hawk route, but no. <laughs> does, does, does this mean we'll, we might see Overwatch characters in it as well? 
Yeah, that, 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 that doesn't sound that far fetched. Um, <laughs> that's an awesome background music. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm in a net cafe. Oh, no, that's all right. That's a beautiful. No, and they have talked about it. They said they are going to introduce Overwatch characters, but not until Overwatch is released because they don't want to take away from the hype of that game. So, you know, because you imagine Overwatch, Sandbox. yeah, Overwatch is about to be released and you put a character that in Heroes of the Storm, you're already showing off that character's skill set to the general public in a playable sense, as opposed to what they'd be doing in Overwatch. So I think that I think they will come, but I don't think we'll see them for a while. The only yeah. Uh, is Sorry, go ahead. Uh, Dustin Browder already addressed this, actually. Mm. He did mention that they were, uh, they were very willing um, to put in Overwatch characters in Heroes of the Storm, but it's going to be a long time coming. Yeah. Well, they talked about it with the Diablo model. He's the best example. Um, so Diablo, obviously, in Heroes of the Storm is Diablo 2, the car- is the model, and not Diablo 3, which, of course, Diablo 3 was sort of out at the time. But they, they created the Diablo model prior to Diablo 3's release, and so they didn't use the Diablo 3 female Diablo because they didn't want to ruin the surprise for Diablo 3 itself. So they reverted back to Diablo 2. So you know Blizzard think on those lines. They're thinking, how can we make our... Mar- you know, we, we don't want to do anything to hurt our marketing, though we will fuck up matchmaking. But marketing, however, is a different story. So they, we know they're thinking along those lines. So. Anyway, just enough about the heroes themselves. What big announcement do you think they will announce at BlizzCon that they're fixing the matchmaking? Do you have any maybe any insights? What big things do you think they might be announcing? In that Grand, term. Grandmaster League. That's Grand. the only that's the only real conceivable thing that I could see coming out of BlizzCon is some mm. variant of the Grandmaster or the Challenger League or yep. whatever have you that, that extra step for ranked play, play that mm. says, Okay, you've gotten into this bracket, now you've got to fight to keep it, and if you keep it, you're proven to be actually pretty decent in this game. Yeah. All right, so Grandmaster League being announced from Clapton. Uh, for Natch and Blue, do you think anything I mean, I can't see them doing anything else unless they've announced matchmaking is fixed. Um, I think that's the only thing they could conceivably do um, that has any real meaning. Uh, hopefully they'll maybe announce a new development team. That would be cool. <laughs> a new development team. <laughs> they, it's, I don't understand how they find it so difficult to just sit, like, understand all the comments on the forums and then take that information and go, mm. hey, you know what, I should maybe look at this and change this mm. in the game. Sure, it doesn't reflect, well, sorry, one person's forum post doesn't reflect everyone's ideas, mm. but some of these things just really aren't hard to implement. Like the drafting system into the game, it should take one of their developers an afternoon to fix that up, really. Yeah. The, the fact that they were using another drafting system in a, mm. like in their big tournaments is just like I I, I don't it's even mind, have words for it. It's yeah. mind blowing. Yeah. So there, there, there's got to be something wrong with the management. Mm. Um, other things like fixing bugs. They yeah they're a little bit faster with Artanis, which we were discussing last week, but mm. they're still slow on fixing bugs. All these heroes. The the heroes are already designed across all their titles. They already have these abilities, and you can see them. Mm. just with the new heroes they release. So it's not hard to just kind of fine-tune that damage a little bit, bring out the hero and go, oh, you know what, it actually didn't work as we thought. Maybe we can tune up the damage a bit or it can, it can still sit in there to be played with for a few months and people can gauge whether or not they like it and then they can remake it from there, you know. So, yeah, yeah I, I, I reckon just most of the days in the office are go in, sit down, play a bit of ping pong, play some <laughs> pinball and... Yeah, just, I don't know. I, I don't see much going on in their offices. Yeah, you're just confused by what they're actually spending the, uh, their, all their priority time on. Oh, and spending all the money from the store on, look at the prices, 12 bucks for a basic skin. I mean, come on. Yeah, that does seem ridiculous. And, you know, for all that money and for all the time, this is Blizzard we're talking about. Like, compare it to a different company for a moment. Right, yeah, exactly. they're of equal importance. And League of Legends, comparably, is a much more well-managed game than Pot. But there's yep. no excuse for Blizzard to not put as much effort into this game, especially mm. since they are trying to compete mm. with League of Legends, with Dota, um, Hell Smite, even. Yeah, definitely. And, but I, I, I think the issue there with the pricing comes down to, and we, we won't we won't talk about it too much tonight because it's 
a little bit off topic in that regards, but I mean, pricing really just comes down to the fact that how else, how else do they make money in the game? I mean, you, you buy skins, you buy mounts, you buy heroes. There's nothing else. There's there's no micro any no little micro transaction to buy. I can't even buy special wards. I can't even buy special banana cupcake pouches to to drink or something when I'm in the yeah. banana just, cupcake pouches. I, I don't know, but just like there's there's nothing that you can just frivolously spend a dollar on in the game. And if See, you could, and if you could, it would probably be twenty five dollars. I don't know. I'm of the opinion that hots may not need transactions in the first place. Um. And it's only because it's being backed by Blizzard, and Blizzard is such a big company. It's got the back. It's it's WoW. It's got WoW and stuff. Yeah. They should have money flowing out the ass. They don't need money coming in from Blizzard. Like I think yeah. when we look at the amount of money Blizzard makes on Hots, it's in it's insignificant compared to what World of Warcraft does, what um mm. Starcraft does, hell, even what Hearthstone does. Yeah. Um, and even then, there is still no excuse again for Blizzard mm. to kind of ignore Blizzard Storm as much as they have been. Hmm. At the same time, though, I understand why they're ignoring the management part. Yeah. Plus, because BlizzCon is happening right now. That's a gigantic event, the biggest event for them. Mm. So I do think that after this BlizzCon event ends, within the next two or three months after that, we're going to see a lot of rapid changes come in. And I think HOTS is going to improve vastly after BlizzCon as a result of Blizzard being able to say, OK, look, this event's over. Yeah. Let's focus more on HOTS because we need to. We need to fix more shit. We need to fix all the crap that's gone wrong. Hmm. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. I, I think we'll um, we'll move on from this point though, because it's just yeah, it's um, we're getting a little bit off, <laughs> a little bit off topic about BlizzCon anyway. But yeah, BlizzCon big event happening this weekend. If you haven't get your ticket, guys, give give Blizzard more money. They need it. They're struggling. They have kids <laughs> to feed and stuff. Um, but it's happening this weekend. BlizzCon, exciting stuff. Next week will be an amazing show because we're going to talk about all the cool goodies coming out of BlizzCon. So it'll be awesome. Um. And so we coming to the close to the end of the show. Um, I don't know. Do, you, do we want to bash Overwatch now? Do we want to have an Overwatch bashing session? Sure, why not? Well, we we do don't it? have any. Um, we don't have any invites. So <laughs> yeah, that's well. it. Yeah, that that's, is... the part, that's the part we're gonna bash. None of us. Yeah. Fucking that's it. So none of us has Overwatch invites. All right, let's do it. We're going to bash Overwatch <laughs> right now. Um, first off. I was hoping for a, here's the surprise, everyone. Thanks for staying. Here's some keys. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing, but that's um. Yeah, that would be amazing. Just get the fuck away from me, you fly flying around this room at the moment. All right, so this this actually did I get it? This comes from Reddit. Reddit gave me this idea, and I think it's so true. Does anyone feel like the neglected, abused stepchild of another relationship's mother from their cousin or something like that, compared to Overwatch and Heroes of the Storm? So for the last six months, there has been so many things that have been coming out of the Heroes of the Storm scene, people saying, we'd like this, this would be cool, can we have this, that would be amazing. Overwatch came out, beta came out, and it has in-game voice chat, voice comms. It has an accommodation system. And it provides in-game stats and out-of-game stats, which are super useful, and has an end-of-game, who did the coolest thing during that game, short little video. Now, the short little video thing, I'm not too fussed about because I don't think you really got in Heroes of the Storm too well. But in, in, in-game in voice chat, stats that mean something, and an accommodation system. We've talked about that in Heroes of the Storm. People have said that would be really cool. It'd be nice to play a game. It'd be super fucking shit. But you go, man, that ETC was amazing. He did Those mosh pits were just on par, and the rest of our team sucked. Let's just give him a thumbs up. You know, Thumbs up, dude. You get a tick on the you were an awesome ETC combo, and it's just and it's like a couple of little other things as well that Overwatch has, and I can't remember, so I can't really talk about them. That I thought people have said in Heroes of the Storm we wanted that. What's going on here? Is Heroes of the Storm some evil? It's some like I said a forgotten horrible experiment by Blizzard to make Overwatch better. Well, if, if things don't change, it's going to be. That's the sad truth. Yeah, it, 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 I mean, to, it sort of feels like it. Blizzard, if you sent me a better key for Overwatch, this never would have happened. Um, yeah. so, uh, send, all, send, all, send all of us a better <laughs> key and make sure the podcast doesn't get put on the internet. You know what I mean? It will just be the live well, stream of sword. It's like, give keys to the 30 plus people that are watching this right now and us four, and then, yeah, this never happened. We're not bashing Overwatch at all. No, not at all. 
Mm. With the voice comms, I think it's really important to mention the fact that the you, the voice comms hundred percent expected. You see it in yeah. all the competitive games, so they had to have it. Yeah. Uh, MOBAs are well known to be a breeding ground for toxicity mm. and just absolutely feral. Yeah, because yeah, feral God... between people. Yeah. Yeah, because That's no so one, cool. no one's gonna tell Roadhog that he's a fat fucking loser and he should kill himself. Because no one, no one's gonna say that in Overwatch. I think MOBAs are <laughs> more notoriously bad for it. Yeah. You may okay. I haven't played enough CS:GO and I've heard some stories mm. over there, but um. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I came from Hon background, as I've mentioned a bunch of times, and yeah, the the voice comms, I, I would say maybe fifty percent of the time, are used for mm. abusing other players over yeah. trying to play with your team. Mm. So, yeah, I'm I'm really not surprised. I've completely mm. ruled that out, and I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see it at all. Yeah, I think it would yeah. be nice in maybe. Um, like enabling it at maybe higher ranked play where people think, in fact, I wouldn't even do that because people mm. are more competitive then. So, yeah, it yeah. get worse. I, I think the pings are good and they don't quite give enough information. Maybe you mm. could add a little bit to that, but uh, yeah, MOBAs are too mm. toxic for just public voice chat, I think. But see, I, I don't know, they've got all these systems in place in Heroes of the Storm that if someone, if you don't like someone, you mute them. Couldn't they just do that to the voice comm side of it? Like, I can do that in Team Fortress 2. I can do it in CSGO. If someone's talking trash and I don't like it, I can just, I can just mute their comms. Let's, I mean, let's look at the, the whole big issue of cyberbullying, right? Mm. All these little kids suffering greatly because people are texting them and yep. abusing them. All you need to do to stop that, right, is not open your phone or delete their messages and not even bother reading them. Some people do. I would say maybe a very few amount of people mm. do. The other people are curious to see what they have to say. Yeah. The message. Mm. Same with the the chat. Or if you mute them, they may go, "Hey, you're really shit at this game. Why don't you do this?" Mm. You then hit mute, and after that, for the rest of the game, they're actually trying to direct the team, and you, you yeah, you you're lost. So mm. yeah, just the the mute button mm. isn't a um. Uh, mm. Uh, a solution Not, to the problem. Maybe yeah. if you could like mute their mic or a vote system, mm. they could do that. Which I don't know. We're talking a, a little bit off topic there, but getting a yeah. bit in depth now. Yeah, for a, for a potentially twenty minute game. <laughs> if for, that... for mobas, I don't think yeah. it can work. I don't know. I, I just think that. I mean, I I I, I do I do I do naturally disagree. You know, it's um we the government didn't ban the use of mobile phones because people were sending nasty messages. Um, people had, they haven't banned email because, you know, it's, we haven't done big things like that. And that's, that's other form of it. So, you know, Facebook's still a thing and people get bullied on that. But I, I feel MOBAs could still benefit a lot from it. But it's just, it's just for Overwatch to be released with beta with it. I mean, it's, it's really, it's like, this is this is the this is the alpha. That's something. Is it beta? No, it's 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 open beta, closed beta. Sorry. This here is the storm in closed beta was pretty good, but was still pretty shit. Overwatch, it's pretty. Po it's it's weird. Here is the storm was a really polished beta. Overwatch is an amazingly polished beta with so many cool features. Where where are them in Heroes of the Storm? That's a released game, by the way. It's, we're not we're not we're not heroes of the beta. We're not heroes of the beta 2.0. We're we're the full released. This is if this has an eighty dollar price tag, you would have had to pay eighty dollars to play this game. Um, you know, I just I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just a bit salty. Maybe it's because I didn't get a key. I'm really salty. <laughs> Look at Diablo 3 when it was first launched. People played yeah. it, people didn't mind the campaign, and then they went, okay, so that, that was a little bit of fun. It chewed up eight hours of my time. Mm. Let's now compare it to Diablo 2. This game should be better, right? Well, what yeah. did I enjoy about this game? Um, well, I guess the graphics were a little better, and a couple mm. of the cinematics are pretty good. Yep. And how long did it take Blizzard to then go, oh, you know what? This was meant to be a massive title, and people were meant to enjoy this. Let's seriously sit down and come up with a whole bunch of new ideas to improve this game. Mm. Took them way too long. Was it yeah. around the first expansion? Uh, somewhere around there where they started adding additional endgame stuff to do. Mm. Yeah, but see, I, I didn't pick up Diablo 3 again to Reaper of Souls. Like, Reaper of Souls came out, and that's when I actually started playing Diablo 3 again properly. 
So, yeah, maybe Hot Sauce mm. is going to be like that. Maybe it's just going to be a... We just... At some point, they'll sit around the the boardroom and be like, oh, you know what? Actually, we've we've got a lot of work to do. Hmm. Let's fix it. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it's a little bit unfair to try and compare Hots to Overwatch because mm. in reality, they're not the same genre of game. They're mm. two completely different genres. They're between MOBA and FPS. And yep. think about it logically. What genre has a larger audience, FPS or MOBA? Because I'd argue the FPS. I really would. I think it's, it, they have a larger audience, but larger audience on a more diverse uh, platform. I, I, I don't think that's the right word. Diverse titles like yeah. you have Call of Duty, um, Mod- Modern Warfare, uh, all those all those fucking games. I don't play <laughs> first-person shooters. Well, CS:GO, um, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare. I think that might possibly be the same game. I don't know. They are. Um, they, are. <laughs> they are. Well, I mean, Battle. Sorry, Battlefield, uh, Call of Duty, Battle CS:GO, story. Team Fortress Two. Um, then you can move on to you know. There's probably still people playing some of the Quake titles. Um, you get all those crappy little first-person shooters come out. The the scene is so it's a diverse scene. You know, there's the first-person shooter category encompasses a lot of cool stuff, and they're all good, and they all have their own audiences, and they all have competitive environments. And so yeah, definitely it has a larger player base to definitely pull from and draw from. Where MOBAs, all MOBAs are traditionally the same. You don't have a like. Well, here's Quake. Quake's a single-player campaign mode where in the multiplayer you do this, where Team Fortress 2 is a class-based da 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 You don't have that differentiation in a MOBA. Oh, well, MOBA... Not, not until now, anyway. COTS is the new generation of MOBA. Yeah, but it's still got those traditional elements. It's just removed like removed items and you have shared team experience. You're still picking a hero. You're still getting to a particular level where you have an, ex- an acceleration of power. You're still picking abilities or things based abilities or powers uh, to increase particular builds or aspect of yourself. You're still pushing a lane. I mean, there's so many similarities, it's not funny. Where first-person shooters, you can actually go, the biggest distinctive thing in this game is you get to be in. You get to be the heavy the heavy machine gunner, where in normal Quake, you everyone's the same, and it's just a matter of what guns you pick up. There's, there's actually very big or very diverse differences in play style of the game. Not- opinion, opinion, anyway. No, no, and you are, you are right to a degree, and to follow on from that note, look at all the FPS titles, mm. none of them, we could argue, are comparatively gigantinormous huge, you know, not on the level of Dota or League of Legends, okay? Comparatively, the Dota, the Dota Internationals, the League of Legends International, they had millions of viewers, possibly. Um, CSGO struggles to get million, uh, struggles to get a million. Um, lots has come into a genre where there's already two massive... Um, no, I'm going being Dota and League of Legends, and they have to compete on that level, and it's not going to work. Hot Sports wants to be able to compete with Dota and League in the short term, because it's coming into an unfair playing field. League of Legends already has a gigantic player base, and at the same time, so does Dota. Hot needs top. This is this is what I think the core solution of all of Hot problems is. It's as simple as time. We just need to give it time, and. With a little bit of motivation, I'm, perseverance, I'm no uh, dedication to the game, it will, no, in it my opinion, forward. outshine both games because I do think Hearts is a far more interesting game to watch and play than League of Legends and Dota. Hmm. That, that's a really good point. The the watching, uh, it's more entertaining to watch. Um, one of my mates who has played the game only a little bit, um, mostly plays LOL. He he says he absolutely loves watching this game because it's just so different to the other MOBAs, so you've got fresh and new things. The team fights generally last longer and they're more um, more interesting. You don't just have one yeah, person, yeah. if we're looking at Dota Portal Key in, oh, what's a blink dagger? And instantly kill someone to initiate or, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it's I'm very different. So absolutely, it's fun to watch. absolutely, absolutely right. Look at, look at the way Dota plays out. It's 20 minutes of farming, 20 minutes of skirmishes, and then one team fight, boom, that's the game. How boring is it to watch the anti-mage farming lane for 20 minutes? That's piss boring. You know, Heroes of the Storm, you got, you know, you got bastards roaming around, you got the Zeratul diving in the back line to pick off the Abathar, you've got the cheeky ETC mosh pit in the middle of everything. It's so much more fun to watch Heroes of the Storm because it's a much more action-packed game. And look at the look at the times that the games take. Hmm. Um, just as a question to you three, what's the longest game you've ever been in? And 
people in the chat, what's the longest game you've ever actually played in Heroes of the Storm? Like, in total, what's the absolute longest? 42 Not minutes. Me. 42, okay. The first, the first thing that pops to my mind, I think I might have played a longer one. I'm not sure, but I'm fairly sure the longest I played mm. was a 37 minute on mines. Yeah. There you go. So, and that was a comparatively short, less than an hour. The Three longest game of League of Legends I ever played was an hour and a half. Yeah. And standard games, like competitive level for League of Legends, go for at least an hour anyway, same as Dota. Heroes of the Storm games are much shorter, and there's more action going on. It's a much more um, viable spectator sport, in my opinion, because it's a lot more action packed. The viewer is, oh, something's always happening. In Dota and League, they're just farming, they're just in the jungle, they're just roaming. League of Legends, there's team fights happening, there's ganks, there's mix, all sorts of different things. I think it just that just really just highlights the differences more so in the games themselves, and it's I I I I hate I hate trying to trying to com compare Hots too much to like the Dota and League of Legends in their game style because they're just they're just different games in that element. They're still MOBAs, they still follow a, a pretty similar formula, but I, I, I think you almost get wasted talking about those points. Here is the storm. It's it is a it is it is dirty fun. Like it's quick, dirty fun, and it's good to watch in that regard because your time investment is potentially an hour for well, it's actually not true. It's, you know, for a best of three that goes to three full series, you're looking at about two hours worth of um, two hours More invested less, yeah. in that, and that's because of the drafting picks, the banning stages, the stuff in between setting up. It's about two hours, but yeah, League of Legends or Dota is a lot longer. So that's a nice thing for Heroes of the Storm, and I, and, I, and there's definitely an element to what you're saying that time is what the scene needs it's it's a new scene i mean it's the the teams we have now the people we have now myself in six twelve months this this may be a different set of four faces here talking about different things happening in heroes of the storm with different sponsorship teams coming out and just just a completely different environment and it's just basically time time to see who sticks who doesn't what develops who comes on board who leaves what changes what doesn't change and it's just it's just unfortunate that it's competing in a market that's super big with super big titles and that the company is making other franchises which are getting more hype. So it's just in a, um, it's in a tight spot. Um, coming back to that, to the, uh, the Overwatch and HOTS thing, mm. uh, when it comes to FPSs, I mean, like, when you look at the games in FPSs and the players they have for uh, first-person shooters, when you play, say, something like Call of Duty and you're tired with it, you can move on to, say, Battlefield or Battlefront mm. or Counter-Strike, and the skills translate. So, yeah. like, the player base or the market that they're trying to target when it comes to FPSs is a lot more loose. So mm. the players will actually shift into another game that they think will be fun. If they're tired with, like, Battlefield 1, they'll release another Battlefield the next year. So mm. the market is a lot more open to target for, like, the company. Whereas yeah. with MOBA, the biggest problem is that player bases, yes, um, Hots is more interesting to watch when it comes to like esports events, but the biggest problem is mobile players are super loyal. You know, mm. you invest 500, 1,000 hours into LOL, you're not gonna suddenly just switch into yeah. another game. You know, they, they and and also like when you do switch, the skills, I mean, you know, positioning, map awareness, and the, all those sort of like meta um, skills that you can have in the game, they don't easily translate. So someone may be tired of LOL, move into HOTS, and mm. be completely lost, and say, oh, well, I mean, I gave it a shot, I'll go back to LOL. Mm. So that may, that may be, like, be influencing the marketing team side of, like, Blizzard on why they're trying to push uh, Overwatch a lot more than um, Heroes of the Storm. Yeah. So yeah. really, the only, the only way that Heroes of the Storm can be taken care of is they have to take care of the community right now. They have to take care of mm. the player pool that they have without having to go, oh, look, this is our game. Everyone should be playing this. That's not yeah. the proper way of like tackling it. Mm. They should really just take care of the people that they have now, and then those people are going to go, look, I know you like LOL, but try this game out with me. You know, like yeah. They need the players to support the game and advertise for themselves. Yeah, they're looking for more organic growth. From the game. Yeah, if, if I may be a bit of an arrogant bastard, I, oh, yeah. I've done that at the Net Cafe. I'm that like, people, that, that's one reason why I like playing Net Cafe because every other bastard who watch me play Hots is like, ooh, that looks interesting. What's that? Hmm. I think I've gotten probably about 10 or 12 people to play Hots. Maybe not seriously, but on a casual level. Um, yeah. And hmm. if every player can bring in two other players, then the scene's going to grow massively. Hmm. 
Yeah, no, I agree. And it's, it's, it's a lovely point. To make that a goal, everyone. There we go, everyone. <laughs> There's 24 people viewing right now. Uh, I'll get two of your friends and uh, force them to play Heroes of the Storm. When yeah. when they say to you why sh- like I've invested a thousand dollars in lol because they are really good at pulling my money, hmm. what, what is the reason that you would give them to be like nah seriously come across and try this? Um, probably I'd say that's probably just a slight bit less toxic than League. <laughs> that's really really hard for me to say because I'm in the ANZ community and we all talk shit about each other. The banter is strong in this one. Yeah, see, see what other regions call toxic, we call, oh, that's just normal. That's just, that's normal. That's it. <laughs> no, I mean, but that's a tough one. And it's, I, 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 I don't think you can really argue with things like that. Or disgusting things like, I spent $1,000 in League of Legends, why should I come play Heroes of the Storm? It's like, I, I spent $100 on Battlefield once. I'm not still playing it. You know, it's been a couple of years now. It's, I've I've moved on. I've grown up. I've I guess it's just well, it's just it's a free to play game. You got not not going to cost you anything. Come play it. A lot of people are playing it. BlizzCon this weekend. Do you want to play Jaina? Nothing else. It's different. You might have a bit of fun. Yeah, that's it. I mean, it's it's. I, I, to be honest, I've actually never come across it as something talking about Heroes of the Storm. Anyone saying, "No, I can't play Heroes of the Storm. I've put so much money into League of Legends." Oh, I've got that from every LoL player I've spoken to. Yeah, Do you know, we we don't want them then. We it's don't the want time them. investment to unlock all the heroes, or mm. like, because they've already got everything unlocked in LOL. Yeah. So either they need to commit the however many hours it takes to unlock them all, or pay money, which they can just pay their money to Riot. Because oh, that's that's actually a fantastic idea in the chat. I think to that Benjamin, uh, Hots need to recruit a friend bonus. Who the hell is 49 Ninja Manabab? Who's Who are you? Is that not Benjamin? I always thought it was just Benjamin. Oh, it actually is. Fuck, I'm stupid. Yeah, thank <laughs> God. Thank God you said, because, uh, what, that's not fucking Benjamin? Jeez. He spelled, he spelled, the, the cheeky bastard spelled it backwards. I'm fucking retarded. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's, um, yeah, no, it's, um, that's actually a really good point. Like, a recruiter friend system for Heroes of the Storm would actually be kind of cool to encourage you to play them to play maybe it's similar like the World of Warcraft you get experience bonus if you play together I guess you already get it when you play with friends but if you target someone and groom them to play Heroes of the Storm that's a kind of bit creepy but um, yeah, groom them to play Heroes of the Storm it would, it would be kind of cool it's like oh mate can you play can you play to level 10 with me I'll get a cool mount I mean bros will do that bros before not bros yeah, yeah, come with me my friend we have a new game play together yes should try and get a, a Blizzard representative on here, Disco, so we can sit down <laughs> here as 24 people and be like, look guys, what, what's yeah, going yeah. on? Start harassing Blizzard, let's do it. I'll start, it, I'll it would start be cool. I've, I've, I've approached them before about it and they haven't been receptacle to it, but they might, it, you know, the, the situation changed, the environment changed. I'm no longer just some random dude that's never spoken in the forum. Uh, there's a bit more towards me. Now, having said that, though, I think I've insulted half of the ANZ scene tonight, so who <laughs> knows? They, they might be riding for Disco to be replaced on the show for next week. <laughs> but, um, alright, that's it. Let's, uh, let's wrap it up there. So that's really, that's it for this week. Uh, well, she's only one last announcement. So anyone that's throwing a BlizzCon party this weekend, don't forget to take a picture of your gathering and send it to the Blizz Twitter, uh, Twitter account thing. Um, Twitter account, Twitter account, sorry, Twitter. Guys need to stop me before I say silly things. So here's the Facebook link for it. They're running a competition. Eight prize, eight or ten prizes up for grabs. Send a picture of your gathering and you could win a collector's edition copy of Legacy of the Void. It's not Heroes of the Storm, but you will get Artanis from it. And I assume you'll get the, uh, get the board, the flying board, maybe, I don't know. But, um, check that out. If it might, it might just be cool. It might just be cool. Um, what's that? I was just looking at chat. That's it. What the fuck? You didn't talk about anything helpful. Who wants? Who wants to make it on podcast? There we go. I've told you they're already writing. They're going to make their own show. All right. Anyway, so that that that's actually just at a point, guys. Uh, out of interest, anyone in chat, if you have any topics, suggestions, things you'd like to bring up or things you want to hear or talk about on the show, please email me at dis- disconcur at gmail.com. Um, I'm always open for feedback. And I would love to hear what you guys want us to talk about. 
Um, if you're interested in coming to the show, also shoot me an email. I know in the past, I think Ninja, Godzilla, and James, and all those sort of guys have been interested in the show. Um, email me, guys. We can we can do this. We can arrange for you guys to be on it. I would love for you sort of guys to come to the show and anyone else. Uh, Discontrol at gmail.com. Anyway, thanks very much, guys. This has been Heroes Untapped. You've been fantastic. Finetch, uh, take it out. Where can people find you if they want to talk more Heroes of the Storm or watch Finetch in streaming action when he's all ready? Uh, catch me in game. F-N-I-A-T-C-H 6540. That's it. In-game, hit him up. And Blue, thank you very much for coming on the show tonight as well. I'm sorry to hear that you've been sick, but I, I appreciate it so much that you managed to drag your corpse out of bed to sit up and do the show tonight. It's, um, where can people get in contact with you if they want to get the flu? Uh, still haven't been back on Battle.net much at the moment, so yep. um, yeah, just you can, you can reach me over Twitch, you can reach me over Battle.net, you can um, yeah, catch me here every week. However you want, ANZ chat, etc. You'll find me. All right, awesome. And also special guest tonight is Clapton from Ascended Gaming. Uh, you've been a pleasure to have on the show. Always, always insightful. Always great to have you on. And um, the Net Cafe obviously was an exciting place tonight. It sounded like it was going off in the background there. It's, it's was... always an exciting place. There's always a bunch of um, angry people playing CSGO yep. generally. Best. That's. That, that is, and that is just another reason why you guys should be playing Heroes of the Storm over CSGO. A bunch of angry people playing over there. Anyway, angry people playing hot. Where can we get in contact with you if we want to uh, talk more Heroes of the Storm? Get in touch with Incentive Gaming so we can organize scrims. Who do they need to talk to? Or more especially, where can they talk to you about it? Okay, so the easiest way to contact me is probably through Battle.net. My battle tag is Clapton, hashtag 6284. That's the easiest. Um, I've got a Twitter. I'll post that in the chat. All right, too easy. Wait, wait. Oh, no, you won't. Right, I can't post Twitter. Wrecked. Wrecked. Up. It's Clapton underscore hot. That's my Twitter. I don't use it that often, though. It's mostly just for nude selfies. <laughs> pretty standard stuff. Um, 200, 200 followers by morning, I guarantee, after a statement like that. Yeah, yeah, basically. I'm going to guess it's Demise making 100 counts over and over just to see more. And more. <laughs> um... And to get in contact with Ascended Gaming, I'm the best one to talk to because I'm probably around the most. Um, I'm not our captain. That's the funny part. I'm not the captain. What? Yeah, no, I'm not. And the reason is very simple. Because um, there's a lot of the things that I can't do uh, that yep. the captain has to do. Like sending in replays, I can't do it. Neck cafe. So um, hmm. our captain is Benji. Benjamin. So talk to Benjamin from Ascended Gaming if you guys are interested in No, 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 no. Not Benjamin. Benji. Oh, ridiculous. Benji. Yeah, sorry. Benji, um, or you can talk to Dralius, who is, um, of course, our friend Jerry Smith. Yeah. I think well, he was on here a few weeks ago, wasn't he? Oh, ages ago, actually. We haven't had Jeremy Smith on for a while now. Yeah, uh, so, definitely, um, definitely show coming up, though. Yeah, that's the easiest way to contact Extended Gaming. Um, look, we'll take on all comers. We want scrims whatever possible. Mm. Um, bring it on. Bring it on. We want, we want some competition. We want, we want to wreck some people. We want to get wrecked. Bring it. All right. And... Oh, and, and that's it. And obviously, I'm Disconcur. You can check out my blog, Disconcur.com. And on Twitter, I'm at Disconcur. And uh, just a quick thing. Don't forget to follow me here on Twitch, guys, because I do do a little bit of streaming during the week as well. Heroes of the Storm and Hearthstone-related stuff. And that is it. Thank you all very much. You've been watching Heroes Untapped. Uh, it's been great having you guys in the chat. Hopefully, I haven't offended anyone or anything or any organization too much. But hey, it's only Disconcur. Who cares? But thanks very much, everyone. And... Enjoy your time in the Nexus, and hopefully BlizzCon blows your socks off. Until next time. Oh, thanks. Thanks, KBA. I love you too. <laughs>